Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome. Welcome to those new subscribers who joined me during March. It's great to have you on board and I hope you enjoy the content, watch it to the end, stick around, give it a thumbs up, all those things so I can keep growing the channel. To those loyal subscribers returning, thank you. I really appreciate it and I love all your comments. So today's video well March went a little fruity for me towards the end of the month yes thanks to the hooker versus hooker challenge I went fruity for those of you who don't know hooker versus hooker challenge is hosted by Jan the Alaskan crafter and Laura from Mad Mimi Fami and Crochet plus a couple of other women and it's hard to explain all the rules, but basically a podcaster goes up against a subscriber, a panel picks the projects and the colours. Guys, make sure you check out the channels and look at what they make. So, for the month of March, the challenge was a bowl with three related items, but not the same item in them. The colours picked were red, green yellow orange red and blue and blue so there was five because that's the maximum of colors you don't do variegated colors and i may be disqualified if i was in it because i think you're supposed to stick to one like one particular green one particular red and i got a little carried away anyway my project I decided I would do a fruit bowl this is my personal fruit bowl at home I love it it's in my favorite color I've had it for years and this is what I base my fruit bowl on except I probably made mine a little small Oops, there it is I could have done the sides higher so it was deeper and the base bigger but this is what I uh, based and I just winged it. I don't know what the pattern is. It's probably muscle memory from somebody's pattern. And I just free-formed a bowl based on my fruit bowl. So that was the first thing. It's made in blue, one of the colours, and some leftover bulky yarn that I had in my scraps. And that's the beauty of this. I love using up my scraps for hooker versus hooker. So I live in the tropics and we have some great tropical fruit. And I thought I would do three different tropical fruit for my bowl. But I put a variation on them. They are leggy fruit. And that's thanks to Joe's Webb who designed the leggy froggy, the leggy spider, the leggy bunny. I haven't done the leggy heart yet. But that's where I became inspired. And the patterns, well, there are no patterns. I just free-formed crochet off muscle memory, project memory, that sort of thing. So my first piece of fruit is the Mighty Mango. Ta-da! Leggy Mango. There he is. His arms were like that when I finished him, but they're starting to droop a bit. This is where I probably went wrong. I used... I held two greens together. I used a different green and I think it's supposed to be one green. But this is made with um, Spotlight Super Saver. No, Spotlight Marvel 8 Ply. Two of them held together. And he has artificial eyes. He's a Bowen mango. So here, R2D2s are the biggest mango. Then you have Bowen mangoes. And then Calypso mangoes, which are generally the ones sold in supermarkets. We used to have four trees in uh, our property in, on the tableland, four bow and mango trees that fruited prolifically. And the bottom ones, the kangaroos used to get to, but the rest of the tree was just laden with fruit. And we would pick what we wanted and then our neighbours were waiting patiently to be told they could come in and they would clean off the trees. One of our neighbours used to actually sell some of the trays as a bit of an extra income, which we didn't mind. Rather than let the fruit rot, because there was far too much fruit for us to eat, he was just a, a little proactive in making himself a bit of money. 
So uh, there you have it. The mighty mango for my fruit bowl. He's a leggy mango. So then I decided we grow a lot of bananas here. We have had a lot of rain, hence the artificial lighting. It is still overcast and raining today. It never seems to stop for very long. And a lot of bananas were damaged during the flooding that we had around Christmas and the prices have gone up. However, we buy our bananas from a farmer who has a street stall on the highway. It's an honor system. You can put the money in the box. He also has FPOS you can tap and they're like $2 a kilo. And the reason they're there is the supermarkets don't want them because they're not perfect, but they're still good bananas. And Thing will stop there and buy five or six bananas. They're never overripe. And yeah, that's how we buy our bananas. Direct from the paddock to the plate. So my banana. Well, there's a bit of a story behind this one. You ready for it? Ta -da! There's my banana. Now, the red tip. He is a biodiversity organic grown banana. This red tip in the supermarket is wax. And that is what highlights he's organically grown and more expensive. However, by adding legs, Reeb said he looks like a politician, Tony Abbott, in his budgie smugglers. Years ago, one of our politicians was photographed coming out of the surf in his red budgie smugglers, which is the skimpy swimsuit that men wears, that we Australians refer to as budgie smugglers for obvious reasons. So that cracked me up. So this is Tony Banana because he's wearing his organically grown budgie smugglers. Another pattern I just winged and came up with. Please don't ask me how I did it. Um, trial and error. I do know I, there wasn't a lot of frogging. I had a picture in my mind and I went for it and I made a few notes. And yeah. I wasn't going to make him organically grown until I was at the supermarket and I thought, that's what I'll do. I'll make him an organically grown banana. But I didn't look think he would look like he was wearing a little sibling suit. So the next one is, because I only made the three, because my bowl was a little small, is Drago the dragon fruit. He is a red dragon fruit in the year of the dragon. Ta-da! So I actually grow these. I often talk about them. Mine fruit prolifically. And right now, because of all the rain, they are flowering and fruiting again. So they're green and then they start to turn red. And that's when I pick them because they will ripen off the vine. And it's better not to let them get this ripe on the vine or the bats and the birds eat them. Now this little tuft, what happens is... There is a flower that comes out when the moonlight is out. They need moonlight to flower. They flower for one night and during the next day, hopefully they're pollinated and you get fruit. I may have one that will flower tonight if there is enough moonlight through the clouds. He may open up. So these little green leafy bits sometimes have red on them because he's ripening and sometimes they're just still green. When you cut a red dragon fruit, he has bright red flesh inside. So Drago, the dragon fruit. I have made one before, sliced in half, years ago for um, a Yarny friend, Penny, in Miami. I sent her Professor Bob, and I winged that one, and I really love him. I think I still have a photo of Professor Bob. So I'll put him at the end. He actually has white flesh inside. You can get yellow dragon fruit, which are quite spiky on the outside. They're very difficult to grow. I do have a young plant that is growing, but it hasn't fruited yet. But I do believe the fruit is quite delicious. The red dragon fruit, the white dragon fruit, it's quite bland. But it is good in smoothies and on cereal. And I have actually made dragon, dragon fruit syrupy jams type thing and swirled it through a cheesecake and that was quite delicious so that's drago the dragon fruit now if i made my bowl bigger i would have 
done a star fruit but I decided it's a pretty crowded fruit bowl there that I've done look guys I had a lot of fun doing this I highly recommend you experiment and just freeform your own crochet come up with your own idea and do it I don't think I frogged any of them maybe the dragon fruit the first one I did he was a little round and then and I and Reeve said he's a little too round and I think I frogged him back to get more of a a coney top on him like he should look like but all of them are made with scrap yarn he's made with two lots no he eight ply um, spotlight marvel eight ply and I think this one is spotlight super saver but as you can see I stuck to the colors as best I can and I had a lot of fun and I do it just to support the guys doing the hooker versus hooker challenge it will be very difficult for me to join in due to the time difference I've managed to catch a couple of their lives because they've been like around 10 o'clock in the morning and I've either been going to work late or it's been a Saturday morning but they're a lot of fun uh, they are so much fun and I love watching them and I love sort of making stuff they come up with so far I've loved making whatever they come up with but this would have to be my favorite at the moment making these free just free forming and coming up with the ideas so guys until next time stay safe stay well have a go at free forming your own project whether it be amigurumi or whether it be a hat a cow just have a go what's the worst thing that can happen it won't look like you think and you just frog it out and reuse the yarn bye for now